Sound is pressure waves. Well, not exactly. Sound that we hear is changes in pressure in the air. Our ears interpret the changes in pressure while our brains interpret the pattern as sounds. If you try to picture the sound, it looks something like this. The main line represents a pressure wave. We hear the differences in the way that the line deviates from the horizontal. Where the deviation is greatest, the top and bottom of the wave is the loudest part of the wave. The area under the curve actually can be taken as the loudness of the sound. By far the most common sound that we, we hear and we experience is the sound of the human voice. And this, this plot is of an audio wave recording saying the word marmalade. But the thing to notice is that during the first R sound, the peak of the pressure wave deviates higher above the middle line than below it. This asymmetry is there because of the way speech is created. Air passes over the vocal cords, creating a pressure wave. But the air is moving outwards, so the wave isn't even, it's biased. It has, it has direction, it has polarity. These waveforms show clearly different sorts of asymmetry, a guitar note and a piano note, compared to the pure elect electronically created sine wave. It's not just speech and music of instruments that have this asymmetry. All naturally created sounds are asymmetric. In fact, the only sounds that exist with symmetry are artificial sounds like, like motors or tires on the road and many synthesized musical instruments. During the 1960s, there was a discussion in the hi-fi world about polarity. The question was whether the polarity of a recording was at all important. If, if a listener stands in front of a drum kit, he can feel the asymmetry of the positive pressure of the wave as the drummer plays the bass drum. Positive polarity. But can you tell the difference on a recording if the polarity is reversed? And is it important? A good case can be made that the playback of a recording should represent the same polarity as the original. But there are added complications. Listening to a concert in an auditorium, the sound is highly complex. But there is a common factor. The music is created by real instruments. And it is uniformly travelling to the ears of the listener. Each individual sound has its own asymmetry. So the mixed sound has a definite and, and very familiar polarity. In most recorded music, this common polarity doesn't exist. The sound is an artificial mix of individual sounds and effects, and there has been no, well, little if, attempt to be sure that the asymmetry of the sound works in the same direction, have the same polarity. The effect of this becomes clear when listening to the difference between a composite studio recording of an orchestra and a recording made in a concert hall using a single point recording system like a dummy head. The difference may be difficult to describe because the, the differences are in fact to do with comfort how easy it is to listen to the sound. I'm now convinced that the reason that major studios nowadays use analog tape as a finishing tool to their mixes is significantly related to symmetry, whether they realize it or not. The magnetic recording process, while being technically excellent, introduces an asymmetric bias to the recording, which in turn reintroduces a common polarity to the near chaos of musical waves. These small and subtle changes make the music more pleasant, actually easier to listen to.